Vamos todos.
the music that it might minister to the needs of the hearer. Lay your hands on the instruments that all that's done will be done to your honor and to your glory. Then God, we pray your blessings upon those out viewing this service. Wherever they might be, hospital, jail safe, confined in a room, wherever they are, we thank you because you are everywhere at the same time. You know their needs, Lord God. Meet them right there. Touch, heal, deliver, save, set free in Jesus' name. I got those that have assembled around your throne of grace. We come thanking you for another day's journey. You've watched over us, kept us from hurt, harm, and danger, both seen and unseen. We just want to say thank you. Now, God, we lift up the preacher of the hour. We pray, Lord God, that you would allow him to come deep down into your wisdom, knowledge, love, mercy, peace, and understanding. Touch his heart, his soul, his mind, and his spirit. That he might come forth and say to us, your people, what you would have us to do. Lord God, be with us now. Move things out of the way. Allow your Holy Spirit to dwell with us right now. Come on in, Lord God, and have your way. Be merciful unto us. Forgive us of our sins. Restoring us the right mind and the right spirit. Now help us to lift up your name through prayer, through song, through fellowship. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us. It's in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus we pray. And the church say, Amen and Amen. Oh, uh -huh. 
requested prayer. Laura Brown, May Gray. She's in the nursing home in Mary. James McLeod's mom. Essie Rogers and her family. Sharon Pullum and her family. Power. Sister Shirley Jackson. We come to lift up Bobby Joe. We lift up the Kimball Marvel family again in their hour of bereavement. We lift up Earl Dean Banks. Will Wright for healing of his body. Marion Whitlock, who like so many hundreds of thousands of others, just lost their job. Prayer changes things. Prayer open up doors. Prayer makes a way out of no way. God still sits high and he still has all power in heaven and on earth. It's great. Wherever you are in Facebook land, YouTube, Zoom, wherever you are, somewhere in your home right now, there ought to be an altar. There ought to be a kneeling place that you can go and talk to your God in heaven. Intercede on behalf of those that are less fortunate that God might hear our prayers. The prayers of the righteous, yeah, it availeth much. Wherever you are, can we now go to God in prayer while we have this opportunity as we intercede on behalf of those who are less fortunate than we are? Prayer makes the difference. He is a way maker. He's 
the mind is regulated. What he has done to others, he'll do it to you. Trust him. Be not to your own understanding. We're charged to bear one another's burdens. Our God is an awesome God. Doesn't matter what situation you are in. Doesn't matter what you are going through. Really doesn't matter what you were coming out of. Our God is an awesome God. He can fix it for you. We bless this holy day. We praise Him. For He is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. You've been so good. You've been so kind. You've been so merciful. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We lift up your name. We say thank you. We say bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. 
Junior, know we we moving on. Yeah, he's not in La La Land, but Mama's in his in her his place. Yeah, she's carrying right along. Little call it got her right where she needs to be. Amen. Somebody, we haven't missed the beat yet. Are you there? All right. Then, for the benefit of our children that are in our viewing audience. Allow me to read from the King James Version, beginning with verse 1 of the 30th division of Psalms. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee. And thou hast healed me. Oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. 
God has kept me alive. And I should not go down to the pit. Verse 4. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for night, but joy cometh in the morning. I want to end my reading right there because I pray I can get past, get up to that part. Amen. Very familiar scriptures. Most of you know more about this than I do. And I want to just share with you for a moment what the Lord placed on our heart. Particularly what's found in that fifth verse. In times like these, it reads, For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but I want to let somebody know joy comes in the morning. I want to share this subject with you from that passage of scripture in that verse. This subject for you, for us. After a while, It'll all be over. Amen. After a while. Yeah. It'll all be over. Let's pray. Merciful God unto you. We give thanks. Another day. Another opportunity. You've been so kind. You've been so merciful. Kept watch over us. Dangers both seen and unseen. Kept watch over us from a virus that we cannot see, cannot feel. But you kept your hand over us. Covered us in your love and in your mercy. And all down through the week, you led us step by step. And for your goodness and for, for your mercy, we stopped out here, God, just to say thank you. Thank you for delivering us one more day. Thank you for delivering us and covering us one more week. Thank you for lifting us up one more time. You didn't have to do it, but you did. So we say thank you. We bless you, we honor you, we glorify, we magnify your holy name. And we realize that after a while, it'll all be over. Come back here now, God, and speak to somebody. Somebody needs to hear your word. Open up our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our spirit. And we may be just not hearers, but doers of your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the church said, Amen. Amen. After a while, it'll, it'll all be over. Uh, after a while, this is, this is a really interesting word. And even with Merriam Webster and all those other folks, and it, 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 it's it, it has a meaning and it has a definition and it has a response that's not always finite. That is, it's not always well defined. But what it does tell us is that after a while means that you are following a short or moderate time. 
But it doesn't say how long. It just said short. What is short? What is moderate? It, it didn't tell us. It just said that after a while means it's following a short or moderate time. After a while. It also means subsequent to. Amen. That means it is after something else. It means also that uh, it's at the conclusion. Yeah. It's at the end. And you're going through it right now, but, but there is a conclusion. There is an end game. It means later on, after a while. Now, there are some common, very common, after a while uh, uses of that word. You've heard them over and over again, just like I have. Somebody's a part of your company, and they say to you, I'll be back after a while. They didn't say what time. They didn't say how long. They just said, I'll be back after a while. You've heard it. And you've heard some people say, uh, like I have to say sometimes here at church when everything is not in my control. I, you, you've heard folks say, we're going to get started after a while. Yeah, when it is after a while, but, but it's a common saying, we're going to get started after a while. You've heard people also on the job, they'll, they'll tell you when you're a new worker, they'll, they'll try to make it plain and make it simple, and they try to encourage you, and they'll say that the job gets easier after a while. Well, once you've been doing it for a while, you, you learn the routine, and it gets easier after a while. I don't know if any of you are like me, but I've had the pleasure of going over to, to some countries like Jamaica. And, and, and I, I go there and I get in the car to go from point A to point B. And, and instead of them driving down the right side of the road, they go down the left side of the road. Yeah, yeah so, so it, it's different from what I'm used to and, and, and when you see it, it takes you a while to get used to people going down the opposite of what you are accustomed to. So we say that you're going to get used to it after a while. Amen, somebody. So for, for, for eight weeks now, we've been isolated. We, we've been locked in. We've been locked down. We've been in seclusion for eight weeks. And somebody said, maybe it'll all be over after a while. We have daily reminders to keep us informed of the COVID-19 tragedy. Over 1.6 million people have tested positive for the coronavirus. All seven continents of the earth are realizing and seeing and have been affected by the virus. In America alone, I don't need to remind you, but almost 90,000 Americans have, have died as a result of the virus. And this week alone is expected that it's going to meet or exceed 100,000 deaths in America. Now, we know that thousands more are being tested positive every day. Even as states across the nation are opening up for business. State after state are opening up their doors as if there's nothing wrong. As if everything is all right. Can I help somebody? It's not over yet. Just because the sun is shining, amen, doesn't mean that everything is all right. Songwriter once said, don't let the green grass fool you. Don't let the sunshine fool you. It's not over yet. The virus hasn't gone anywhere. It's still here. The numbers tell us every day that more and more people are becoming infected by the virus. Can I hit somebody? 
I got good news for you. Troubles don't last always. After a while, by night, the storm is passing over. After a while, everything is going to be all right. In, in this 30th division of Psalm, David is able to look back over his life. And, and he, he sees some things that you and I need to look back on in our own lives. He, he looks back and he sees where God has brought him from. He, he looks over his shoulder and, and he understands what God has brought him through. God didn't leave him behind, but he delivered him. He, he brought him through. He looked back and he saw how God had delivered him through his trials and through his tribulation. So, so David said that he had a praise for God. He had a, a shout for God. He had a holy ghost time for God. He had a praise for God because God had delivered him. David said in verse 1, I will praise you, Lord, because you saved me from my grave. You, you delivered me. You, you, you picked me up. You, you, you saved me from my Seeing you, you, you brought me up and you didn't have to do it. Somebody said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deep in sin within, sinking to rise no more. My, my master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Now, saved am I? The songwriter said, No. Lifting me. Who is love? God is love. Jesus is love. Love lifted us. You see, when, when, when you know you are on a direct path ahead, when you look back over your life and, and, and you can see where you have come from, when, when you look back and see where God came in, God stepped in, when you can see where he picked you up, when you can see where he turned you around, when you can see where he placed your feet on a solid rock, it gives you something to shout about. He didn't have to do it, but he did. That's worth praising God for. And that's worth lifting his name up. That's worth sharing with him and, and, and praising him in the morning. It's, it's worth praising him at noonday. It's, it's worth praising him at night. Every chance we get, we ought to want to praise his holy name for his blessing. David said in verse 2, I will praise you. Because in my hours of sickness, whatever was wrong with me, it could have been cancer, it could have been diabetes, it could have been high blood pressure, it could have been a heart condition, a lung condition, a liver problem, whatever it was, I was at the brink of death. And David says, I pray to you. Doesn't say what he said, but I hear David praying that God said, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, heal my aching body. Lord, save me. Lord, have mercy on me. I hear David crying out to his God, looking over his shoulder and seeing where he came from, seeing how good God had been to him. David was saying, when I pray, and I pray, when I pray all night long, when I went down on my bended knees and I asked God to help me, please, he says, you, Lord, came to my rescue. You helped me. You stopped what you were doing and heard my humble cry, saving me from death and from the grave. Nobody did it but you. The doctors couldn't do it. The medicines couldn't do it. The nurses couldn't do it. The machines couldn't do it. But only through God, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness, it saved me from going down in the grave. David goes on to say in verse 4, therefore, in other words, because you have delivered me because 
You have brought me to this point because you kept your hands on me. He says, faithful people will praise you with a song. Faithful people will honor your holy name. Faithful people, those that know that God has brought me, those that know that God has delivered them, faithful people, those that have trusted in him and didn't not into your own understanding, those that have been faithful to trust God from one day to the next day, those that have been faithful to trust God from one week to the next week. David said we're going to have a song of praise for you. We're going to honor your holy name. Just no matter what you call him, Jesus Christ, whether you call him Lord or Lord, whether you call him Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, or whether you call him Master or Savior, we're going to sing and bless your holy name. Whether you call him the Son of Man, the Son of God, Counselor, whatever you call him, David said, we're going to lift up your holy name. Doesn't matter what we've been through. Doesn't matter what we are going through. I serve a God who's able. I said he's able to deliver us in time of our trouble. David said, I learned that God has anger. Yeah, he gets angry sometimes. I learned that, that when he gets angry, it lasts for just a little while, first time. But your kindness lasts for a lifetime. Sin angers God. God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. Adam and Eve sinned against God. They angered God. That separated God from Adam and Eve. God still loved him. He had mercy and pity on them. They were disobedient. And so because of their sin, God had Adam to have to fall the earth and work for his food. He had Eve bear the pain of giving birth to a child because of their sin. I want to let somebody know I too sin along the way. It angered God. But when I ask God for forgiveness of my sin, when I ask him to renew the right mind and the right spirit in me, when I plead with him to have mercy, he allowed me to look up to the cross. He reminded me that Jesus paid for my sin. He reminded me that though I sin. I can be forgiven of my sin only through the blood of Jesus Christ because he saved me because he gave me another chance every day I have a song to sing I have a shout to give every day I have a praise for God because what he did for me, he did for somebody else. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Just 
with my day. That's why I keep a praise for God. I can praise Him in the morning. I can praise Him at noontime. I can praise Him at nighttime. I can praise Him while I'm driving. I can praise Him while I'm working. I can praise Him while I'm sleeping. All oh, that in the year, I want to praise God. David said, at night, at night, we may have to weep sometimes. At night time, we may have to cry sometimes. Weeping may endure for a night. Weep because the children won't do what you tell them to do. Weep and cry because the doctor gave you a bad report. You can weep and cry because your health keep on failing you. You can weep and you can cry because your money won't suffice the bills that you have. You can weep and you can cry because the coronavirus can't go nowhere, can't do anything. You're tired and you're frustrated having to stay in the house all day long. David tells us that after a while, by and by, don't worry about it. It'll all be over. Don't worry right now because God still has everything in control. David was trying to say, I've been to the mountaintop. I've looked over the Jordan River. And let me tell you what I saw. I saw joy. Coming out the water. I saw peace coming out the water. I saw love coming out the water. Joy comes in the morning. Peace comes in the morning. Love comes in the morning. After a while, it'll all be over. Won't have to worry about a virus because God is going to fix everything. Won't have to worry about staying at home because God is going to open up the door. Won't have to worry about food on the table because God is going to supply our every need. After a while, it'll all be over. How do you know it's going to be over? Because God has all power in heaven and on earth. He has all power. He promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone. And if God said it, you can take it to the bank. God is faithful to every word. As we say in this house and in Facebook land, Zoom and YouTube, come on and stand with us. There may be someone that need to know who Jesus is. There may be someone that need to meet him as your personal Savior. You've waited a long time. Yeah, you've done the things that you want to do. And today, you ought to recognize that it's time to get right with God. After a while, it's going to all be over. So won't you come? Come on and get right with God. Come on and get to know him as your personal Savior. Come on and join the Christian man. If you are here, why you have this chance, won't you come now? Doors of the church are open. Doors of the church are open for you. Facebook, Zoom, YouTube. Come on and give us a comment. Let us know. We can come on and share with you the word of God. Plan of salvation that you might be saved. Those are the church of Trust in. Because after a while, after a while, it'll all be over. Those are the church 
Stay right there. Stay on the battlefield. Keep trusting him. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us then continue with our worship. Somebody say work. We're going to come now and worship God with our tithes and with our offerings. We're going to worship him. We're not going to frown about giving to the God's house. We're going to have a smile on our face. Now, it's hard for me to smile because let me, let me share with you this as we come to worship. I just want to let you know because many people are not aware, and I want you to know. We have a lady named uh, Mr. and Mrs. Murphy. They are neighbors of the Collin family in Maryland. They've been viewing our prayer hour on Facebook or YouTube, one of them, and they decided that what they wanted to do was to contribute, amen, to our worship service. I want to let you know that there's a lady named Sarah Landrum, and I know she's probably not watching right now, but during the course of the week, she read an article in the paper about what Bethel is doing to help feed the children in the community. She came by the church and dropped off her, what are they, what's that check y'all get? I saw people get stimulus pack, yeah. She got her stimulus check and read that article and said, I want to help Bethel feed children in West Memphis. And she came by the church, took the time out of her schedule, and she left her stimulus pack off. Amen, somebody. Now, y'all, y'all cheating the pastor because you're trying to be into a mayor here. And I'm not the mayor. But I want to let you know, since y'all put it in my hands, and you know I don't need to do this. But Miss Stewart came by early this morning. She left all of her tithes and offerings. Miss Ernestine, guess what? Her grandchildren came by this morning, left her tithes and her offering. Uh, Miss Carolyn Boyd, day before yesterday, gave the pastor her tithes and her offering. Can I tell you all something? I'm not the mayor, man. The tithing box is right here. Amen. You all can come on in here and just drop it in there. Let the church say amen. I mean, I don't mind. Somebody drove up and gave me there. And I appreciate that. Let the church say amen. But I just want to let you know that I don't mind doing it, but it's not something that I treasure because you know how some of you all are. Y'all start saying things that's not necessarily true, and I don't worry, I'll try to stay away from that. Amen. Brother Brad, you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, so y'all bring it to the church or give it to somebody else. Yeah. You trust them, too. And I have mine, so come on. Come on, everybody. And, and by the way, some of you out in Facebook land, some of you sent Gilify and Cash App and put it and send it in my account. I know. Uh -uh. No, you sent it to the church cash app. I ain't gonna call your name and bust you out, but send it to the church, not to the preacher. Because so I got folk that work for the banks and places like that. They'll look in there and see where the pastor. No, it ain't gonna, I ain't going down like that. Send it to the church. Amen. Somebody. Y'all know somebody know what I'm talking about. So come on, and, and, and those of you that's on the screen, Cash App, you see it there. You're giving by Cash App. You're giving by Give the Buy. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm going to have to take that one off that says, give it to the, drop it off at the church. Praise the Lord. 
with a smile on our face. Let us see it. We're worshiping God with our time. And with our You can't keep him here. I don't care. God bless you. God bless you. Our God is an awesome God. More you give, what? More he gives to you. Why? Because he showed us how to keep God. Yes. Shall we stand all over the house? All things come of thee, O oh Lord. All things. And of thine own have you given me. standing with us for just one moment. Please remain standing with us. Before you sign off Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom, would you please send us your city and state so that we can get some geographics and so we can do some things uh, in support of you wherever you are. I know we have people stretched across across the country that's zooming in, Facebooking in, liking us, and all that. So please, before you sign off, just let us know you're there. Some people don't send comments, and I understand that. You just want to come on anonymously and, and, and share your worship, and I understand that. But it would help us in our plan if you would just let us know what city and state you are sharing with us during this hour again. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. One moment of silent meditation, please, as we prepare to depart this heaven. We pray for the bereaved families in our community and around the world. For the homeless, the sick, and the shut in, the less fortunate. We lift up our city, our state, and our federal government workers. They truly need our prayers. We also pray for the 45th President of the United States of America. Lord, have mercy. We lift up every church door that's open under the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. We pray God's blessings be upon that congregation. One moment for you and one for me. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest rule about with each one of us now and forever. Three times together let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and have a blessed week in the Lord. Keep the faith. Trust in the Lord and leave not your own understanding.